I want to comment on what you said. I think it would be useful for the, in this exercise to to split it between to make a split between ownership and and the use of the car because we have um, one problem is getting people to use the car less, but we have definitely have a huge problem. You mentioned legislation on ownership of cars. There is nothing taxing anybody on the ownership of cars. I mean, unfortunately, we're getting a, a second-hand market here that's huge. I mean, people will, will try to sell off their own car every time, which means that the bank of cars is going to remain there. I know that recently the police have made uh, big efforts to get rid of a lot of abandoned cars, but I think there is nothing, there's no incentive to get rid of your car and buy a new one. I, mean, I recently did that. And the sort of comments that I got from people around were, well, but I've only got about £300 for the car. There's no bang. But people were still saying, why did you sell it off? Well, I just want to get rid of it, really. But I think, I think we need to make, we need, need to divide for, for legislative purposes the ownership of the cars and do something to incentivize getting rid of second hand cars or exporting them. I don't know, I don't know what we could do. And the other thing is educating people to use the car less. The, the reason why people have cars is obviously a status symbol and you know they want to have the car as you say to feel good and all the rest of it so that's a serious problem that you have to address um, in advertising you know showing the the luxury the, the sort of various cars and what have you the other thing is that you, in order to encourage people not to have these kind of cars you do have to take or put in place certain measures to to so that you you don't go out and buy more and more cars. There are countries where they stipulate that before you can buy a new car, you have to sell your old one. Um, so that sort of creates a, a, a situation which means that you're not going to have so many cars just standing around because if you want to buy a car, you're going to have to get rid of your old car, whichever way you do it, whether you sell it or you dispose of it or whatever. That's number one. Number two, the government does have to take responsibility. They have to take responsibility for 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 implementing some form of some form of tax structure to restrict people, not to ban them from having cars. Because I mean, obviously, that would be a silly and, and and being green or environmental doesn't mean that we say nobody should have a car. Not at all. But let's, as you said yourself, Selma, it's a question of being responsible, taking the right attitude. Yes, you can have your car, you can enjoy it, you can go to Spain and all the rest of it if you need it desperately to go shopping. But do you really need to do that every single day? So of course, it's a combination of things. The transport system, we want a great transport system, it has improved, but they can never be as efficient as they should be because there are too many cars on the road. And as an example of that is when we have rain, and you know, you just cannot drive or go anywhere. So again, you need to, it's a catch-22 situation. We want to use more uh, transport, we're not going to use it because they're not uh, as effective as they ought to, because we have cars, so we take the car out and so on and so forth. So I think it's a combination of trying to educate people to think in a more responsible manner, getting the governments to take this on board and seriously consider whether they should restrict, I'm just putting ideas out, restrict the size of the car or restrict the ownership to one or restrict the fact that they have to sell before they can buy a new one or, or even implement a tax system uh, according to how many cars you have. You I think Lionel's point on distinction between ownership and usage is very important, yeah. I think, particularly on that point. Yeah. Because you could own, could own the car, just use it at the weekends and not for your day to day. And I mean, in a situation like that, owning a car is really not that big a deal. Sorry, I just want to. I think there's a very easy way around it, all of that, which is you tax fuel. You, you place higher taxes on fuel, and that means that people who have larger cars but use more fuel will have to pay more to run their cars. So you're not, you're not charging the premium for running a, a large four wheel drive. But they will have to pay more because they will pay higher taxes on fuel. And I think it's a basic principle of taxation, which I think we may have missed in Gibraltar, is that you tax bad things and you don't tax good things. You know? And here we pay some of the highest uh, income tax rates in the whole of Europe. You know? And yet, hardly any tax on, on fuel, hardly any tax on cigarettes, have no tax on internet gaming. You know? and, and I think that this really undermines the fabric of society. And, and I just think that taxing fuel is a good way of, of gradually reducing 
Can't you? And also incentivizing people with better public health. We're going to get queues of people trying to stay to buy their fuel. I just disagree very strongly.